Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus Gives Personal Truth to Kate Eckersall, filmed on the 17th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Yes, yeah, so um, welcome. Uh, have you got a right shot of myself? Is Kate in the shot? Oh, good, eh? She shouldn't be, by the way, because <laughs> that one's handling Kate. <laughs> um, yeah, so Kate, you asked me about the issue or wanted some feedback about the issue with why women treat you harshly. And, and you sort of know why they treat you harshly, but, but your response to it was what your concern was more, wasn't it? Like, yes. So, so if you could explain what your response is. Well, I've had some further, like through clarity with it, through the, the subsequent presentation. So yeah. do you still want me to? Yes, I do. Well, like okay. even if you want to raise what your clarity was. Well, I realised that um, when the law of attraction event is attracted, um, yeah, so usually... So the harsh woman, the law of attraction event being the harsh woman treating... A harsh family. treatment, like yeah. judgment, condescension, lots yeah. of other things. Yeah. Um, then I have an unloving response to that. And what was your... Un Anger. Response? Anger, so, yep. Yeah. Yep. And when you get angry, um, what's the anger about? Do you... It's about, well, it's about my addiction, my demands of how... Now don't get all philosophical on me now. Okay. Just tell me what it's about. Like, in terms of, if oh, yeah. you feel the anger, like, yeah. if, if some woman treats you badly... Yeah. ...and the anger starts coming up, what's the feeling in it? Like... It's not fair. They shouldn't do that. Like... Okay. They shouldn't do that. Now, of course, they're allowed to. God's laws allow them to. Yes. Of course, it's not a loving choice they're making. And yes. you know that. Yes. Right? So it's not a loving choice they're making, but God's laws do allow them to make the choice of treating you harshly. So the question then becomes, well, why do they want to make that loving choice with you in particular compared to other people? Yes. Yeah. So did you come to any resolution of what that was about? Yes. Um, I felt... Go on, blank. Uh, well, I, Say what I don't you? know if I... I don't want, I was going to say something else, like about, yeah. yeah. You say what you want to say. Do you want me to? You can just... I want you to say what you want to say. Oh, well, I was going to say then I was looking at the repentance issue. Right. I was with, very focused on... in particular? Well, I was focused on repenting for the damage I was then doing to other women. By getting angry in return? Through my response, yeah. Right, gotcha. And then yeah. when you presented the last day of presentations that we've had, um, yeah. I realised that was all an avoid avoidance of a f actual forgiveness issue that would Correct. then help me solve my repentance issue. Right, so you, you thought you had to repent for your unloving, rageful behaviour. That's right. When the reality was that you, there was some causal emotional issues with... My mum, I would yeah, expect, yeah. You would expect, but I'll you haven't think at this stage, yet. I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, it's only really intellectual, the process at the moment. Good eye, good um, eye. But yeah, I would, I'd created the, the dramas with the women and the drama of the repentance issue even to avoid looking at my mum. Yeah. Like there was a strong... Yeah, so you've had a lot of self-reflection about it now. Yeah, but not yet gone into the emotion. No. So that's what I would like to talk to you about, actually. Okay. Get, getting into the emotion. Okay. <laughs> okay. And... Um, to get into an emotion like this, you need to first feel the actual resistance emotion. Does that make sense? So if you think about your stuff with your mum, what are the actual resistance emotions that you have? About, in other words, why don't you want to get into your stuff with your mum? I want to maintain an addiction, like I want to avoid her getting upset. Okay, no. so that's one thing. You want to avoid her getting upset with you. Yep. And if you raise the truth, what will happen? She's highly likely... Well, she's not going to agree at all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just, I have in some previous discussions. So. Yeah, and she hasn't agreed. 
And she's treated you condescendingly, probably, just yep. like these harsh women do. And she went into guilt, which was her own narcissism. Which meant you had to go and feed all of, yep. you know... Yeah, which I then had to say was OK. And, you know, she could feel that she was a bad mother and let herself feel that. Yeah. 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 So you had to help her through her guilt, right? Uh, which is another narcissistic thing for a person to do. To, I mean, on their behalf, to ask you to do that. Yes. Yeah. And what are other responses you've had so far? Uh, denial, like she would just say, no, I can't see that that would be the case. Right. And what about how her feelings about you? What, what does she then do with you? Um, it's just a question. I, don't, I, know I think she just tries harder to have another, like, yeah. So she, she tries harder to prove uh, that she's been actually, a good girl? Or? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, sometimes she does reflect and then say that she's seen some truth or yep. but then the same thing will repeat so i sort of realized right. oh she's not really getting it because yep. it wouldn't repeat on and on yeah and why have you engaged her in that process why, why have you told her the problem well because you don't live together do you no so, i still wanted to maintain a relationship with her okay so you're still really wanting something from her aren't you definitely yeah and that desire to get something from her caused you to tell her in the hope, what mm. was your hope? That she'll change. That she'll change. And then I can avoid the whole problem. <laughs> yeah, see, can you see, even if she changes, you still have the sadness in you. That's true, and I'm still attracting lots of other mums, mean mums. <laughs> mean people mean, doing the same thing she used to do, it would be. If she had changed, oh, yeah, yeah. it would be, if she, if she changed and was a lovely person, you would still be attracting the mean, nasty women um, projecting the same things onto you because of the emotion of forgiveness not being engaged, which is the hurt child's feelings not being engaged. So even involving your mum is a part of the addiction. You can see that? Yeah, I can see that, but I have some resistance. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> because, yeah, well, you might... What, what's the resistance you, you feel? I feel... Um, I feel it's harsh. Like if I was to cut her off, um, yeah. I feel something about myself about that. I can't quite identify. So you identify feel the judgment it. of yourself if you prevented having. Be I feel like if I prevent a law of attraction that's coming to me, mm. that I'm denying something about myself. Hey, I can't agree with that at all. Actually. Well, <laughs> please <laughs> explain why. <laughs> well, well, if we look at it this way. Firstly, if you notice bad treatment of another, from another person towards yourself and you choose to remain in a situation through your exercise of your will, you choose to remain in an interaction which continues to incur that bad treatment, how are you treating yourself? It's, it's a harshness. Yeah, so you're being harsh with yourself. Is that yeah. loving? No. No. And are you be really being honest with them from an emotional perspective? No. Because you're not saying to them, are you, hang on a sec, this behaviour is not loving and I'm not going to put up with this behaviour anymore. But if, this is another issue, like when they haven't requested that feedback, like my mum hasn't. She's interacting am with Am I, you. is it, you know, should I even say anything or just look only at myself? Well, you, you would say something if she interacted with you. So people at work say, like, would it also... Yeah, I say something with you when you interact with me. But I don't, if you don't. But you know that, you know that I have some will to change, you know? You know that I've expressed... No, that's not the reason why I do. Because I come along to... No, that's really? not the reason why What's I do. What's the reason? Either. The reason why I do is because if I loved myself and I loved God, I would honour the truth in every situation. And that means my whole life I honour the truth in every situation. So, so if I notice an interaction that's out of harmony with love towards myself, because I'm personally involved in that interaction, I will state the truth about that interaction. So would you say like if you were just at the supermarket or something yep. and no one that's ever come to one of your seminars or expressed any interest w with you, yep. you'd be like, oh, you're pretty angry today. Well, if she was angry towards me, yes. Oh, wow. Well. Does that make sense? Depends if she was overt or, or subversive with it. If she's yes. subversive, I just... Honestly, a lot of those situations don't affect me anymore because I don't absorb the emotion. What I'm getting at is that you do. 
I do, yeah. yeah. And and you still allow yourself to, because there's a hole there. The I hole, know why. which yeah. is the lack of forgiveness. If you had forgiven, the hole would be patched up, right? Yeah, and the attractions would change. The attraction would change, and so that. But even if it didn't change. Let's say somebody oh, yeah. decided through their own will that they were going to attack you. Still, mm. would that attack harm you anymore? No, I'd be loving. I'd love them. This is what I. This is where I want to arrive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so but how are you going to do that without patching the hole? It's not possible. It's not possible. So the only way the hole is going to get patched is by the forgiveness process, which is. Which feeling is... the hurt child, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So feeling the hurt child is the forgiveness process, isn't it? Yes, releasing like the Coming the to cause. terms with the truth about what actually happened and actually grieving or going through the emotions associated, which range from anger right the way through <laughs> down into fear and then grief. Right? At the moment, you're not doing that. What you do is you blame yourself. Yeah. And Or you say to yourself, that person was unloving to me, but it is my law of attraction. My, it, is, it is what I've attracted. So, so I shouldn't prevent it, is what you tell yourself. I tell myself that, yeah, and that I should stay there because I'm resisting and it'll help me not resist or something, but it's sort of the opposite. I can no, see. No, it doesn't help that, it does it ever, if you think mm. about it. I'm not sure, but no. I haven't experienced ever. But <laughs> yeah, it never does. Like, but what I found is this: I notice the attraction. So someone's trying to abuse me. I decide I'm not going to stay in this situation, but because to stay in this situation would be unloving to myself. So I attempt to leave the situation. If the other person continues to abuse me, then I'll say something to the person. Right? I'll say it. so. So, for example, I'm here at my own seminar. I can't leave and a person comes up and abuses me, I can't leave because it's my own seminar. If I left everybody, <laughs> I'd be unloving to everybody who's left, right? So I can't leave, so what do I do? I have to ask them to leave. And if they refuse to leave, I have to get the police in to ask them to leave. Mm. Now, I might not have patched up the emotional reason why it occurred, mm. but that would be the most loving thing to me and the most loving thing to them because I'm no longer feeding their addiction to abuse, abuse me because they have an addiction, obviously, to abuse me. And I'm no longer feeding, like, I'm also then being loving to everybody left in the environment. Does that make sense? If I do all of this. Yeah. So I would still, still go home and I'd go, wow, that was interesting. I had three more guys come up to me this uh, last seminar and just abused me for no reason. Now, that's obviously something my soul's attracting. Now, instead of getting real harsh on myself and then going, well, what I should do is I should next, next week end, I'll have a seminar with only those three guys. <laughs> right? And then I'll have the full bore of their abuse right, come at me. And then I'll somehow, through that experience, get into emotion. No, I don't do that. And hopefully attract more so you can have another <laughs> seminar and have even more of them. Yeah, who, who wants that? I don't want that. I seem to want that. You seem to want that. So why would you want that? Well, it's, it's created the drama that then helps me avoid the actual issue. That's one part of it, yes. There is the avoidance of the actual grief associated. It's not, you're not going to be able to feel this grief while all these people are attacking you, are you? I'm pretty focused on the attack. Yeah. Like managing it, managing yeah, well, my it life. Is, well, it's harsh. Like, the reality is when people attack you, it's harsh. It's very hard to feel your grief in that moment. It, it, you want to go to a place where you've got some love of yourself, some love present, and feel the grief then, right? So you want to leave that place, and you don't want to put yourself back in that place over and over again, right? Because when you put yourself back in that place over and over again, you're putting yourself in a harsh environment, and it's highly unlikely that you'll actually get to the grief under those circumstances. Does that make sense? So, so I would stop doing that. But it is also an addiction, and you know how it's an addiction? Apart from avoiding, I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, you want that person to actually change yes. before you do. Yeah, that's true. Does that make sense? So basically what you ten have a tendency to do, and this is in particular with your mother, you have a tendency to go back to her and go and give her another opportunity to change. 
Now, whenever you're doing that, you're actually wanting her to change before you do. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And there's always a reason that we have behind wanting somebody else to change before we do. And most of those reasons are we don't want to feel, are related to this. We don't want to feel our pain. We want them to stop causing our pain. Does that make sense? Yep. And we don't want to feel our pain. Now, there's two problems with that reasoning. One problem is that we actually have the pain inside of us, and it doesn't matter whether they stop causing our pain or not, we still have the pain inside of us and it needs to be released. So that's one problem. Mm. While we're trying to get them to change, we're not allowing ourselves to change. So that's an issue. But the second issue is that we're actually requiring something of them that we are unwilling to do for ourselves. Ethical issues. So there's ethical issues here. We want them to change before we change. Now, most people who have... This is, this is the biggest impediment to forgiveness. Most people want the other person who caused their pain to change before they forgive them. Does that make sense? Now, the only problem with that is this. When we want somebody else to change before we forgive them, we are asking a person who's probably in a darker condition to ourselves to change first before we allow our own change. They're in a darker condition because they are the ones who abused us. They are the ones who did the actual damage without any thought. They are the ones who keep on incurring the damage over and over again. And we're basically saying, you stop doing that first and then I will forgive you. And the problem with that is that's highly unlikely they're going to stop doing that first. And if it's highly unlikely, that means that I'm waiting for them to change. Yeah. And this is a major reason why we get so frustrated and angry mm. with people with regard to change. We want them to change first. Right? So, so it's actually an addiction to want somebody else to change before you do. There's a, and the reason why it's an addiction is because it helps you avoid the process of forgiveness. It helps you avoid the hurt that you felt. See, it's a lot nicer if, let's say I hurt you, and it's a lot nicer for you if I come to you and say, oh, I'm so sorry, Kate, you know, like, you know, what can I do to undo this problem? And you just go, oh, that's so wonderful. It? It's like, I'll probably never address <laughs> my own issue. And still never cry about the hurt. And this is the trouble. The hurt's inside of us now. It has to be released. And if I did that, it would be great for me that I did that, that I'd be repentant if I caused your hurt. But the likelihood of me getting into repentance before you forgive is fairly low. It's not impossible. It just depends how sincere I am, right? Now, if I can give you some illustrations of this. My good friend Cornelius, when he was in the first century, did a lot of damage to other people, in particular a lot of damage to women. And there were many, many rapes as a soldier that he committed, and he can't even remember the, most of the women he raped. Like... That's how bad it is. Like, there's so many. Does that make sense? Some of those women are in the hells right now still, and they're only there for one, because of one reason. Do you know what that is? Because of their anger and unwillingness to forgive Corny? Yeah, their unwillingness to forgive Corny. Corny has gone to them and demonstrated his repentance to them, and their hatred of him is so great that even when he was repentant, they still couldn't forgive him. Right? And God's forgiven him. He's forgiven himself. And he, 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 had, he received divine love and progressed all the way through the spirit world into the, into the celestial heavens. He, he wouldn't even be here now without having to go through that entire process. Right? And yet some of the women that he harmed are still in the hells for their own... And the only reason is because they refuse to go through the emotion that Corny caused inside of them, that Corny knows that he can't do anything about now. Does that make sense? And Corny's yeah. gone through all the pain of even recognising that himself, and it still hasn't helped them. And they're just firmly holding on to not forgiving, not, not feeling the hurt that, it, that happened. Does that make sense? So we definitely don't want to do that, because you can go on for a long time doing that. Yeah. 
And, some re- and for some people in the hills, that's the only reason why they're there, because they've never forgiven what's actually happened to them. They've never allowed themselves to feel the hurt. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so not feeling the hurt is an addiction in itself. That's an avoidance of being overwhelmed emotionally. It's a lack of faith in trust in God. So we need to see that. So this is what's happening with your mum. What's happening with your mum is that there is a lack of faith and trust in God that if you release the emotion, that you will be better. Yeah. And you're still wanting her to change. You still want her to, to... And so you keep giving her opportunities. And even the thought that it's harsh to not do that is actually a thought that's out of harmony with truth because God doesn't do that. So God says, right, if somebody does something wrong, what God says is, right, you've done something wrong, I can't give you, none of my love can flow into you anymore and while this thing is inside of you. I'm going to wait until you release it. But do you have any interaction with God in between? Well, I haven't found, so... No, you don't. There's just, it's just a line in the sand and God doesn't step over it. And, and if we step over these lines that God draws in the sand with our relationships with other people, we're really proving that we don't understand much about love yet. Because love of somebody else doesn't sacrifice love of yourself. And love of yourself doesn't sacrifice love of someone else. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. I can see it now. So what you're doing when you go back into the abusive situation, you are, you're sacrificing love of yourself. You're not actually, it's not helping you to love yourself. It's actually harming you further. But you also wouldn't go away from the situation and then ignore it if you loved yourself. Because mm. that would also be sacrificing love of yourself. What you would do is you go away from the situation, you withdraw from the situation, and then you would sincerely go through, okay, this has shown me there's a problem inside. What is this problem? What can I do about it? You know, you'd start analysing all of those things still. So that's what I do. So I go after a talk where, you know, I've had three or four guys all attack me and abuse me or whatever else, and, and now I've had this in the past a lot. I'll go home and have a cry for a couple of days and get rid of the emotion. Mm. But I don't then invite them to my next talk. All right? Even after I've dealt with the emotion. Yeah. Because I know if that's the way they've treated me, they're probably going to treat other people in the audience the same way. If you, if you treat the person who's giving you the gift that way, then how are you going to treat the other people who are not giving you the gift? You're probably going to treat them worse. And, and also I know that I am not helping them if I don't draw the line in the sand and yeah. say, no, no, you've stepped over this line now. You've stepped over the line of love. And, and my, te- my, my teachings and my seminars are all about love. Like, obviously you're not interested in love, so don't come until you are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can do the same in your personal life. You can do the same as that in the same way. Yeah. So one of the reasons why you get angry with the treatment this, from these harsh women is because you keep placing yourself back into the same situations over and over again. And the other reason why you ke- are getting angry is because you're not allowing yourself to see what's going on with your mum. And you keep placing yourself in the same situation with your mum. And one of the main reasons why you do that is because you want her to change. You want her to see what she's doing wrong. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to give up this grief that she doesn't really love you. You don't want to really feel that. I don't want to change myself. Yeah, you don't want to feel that she doesn't love you. No. You, want to feel, you want to give her another opportunity to love you. And the reality is you can give people who have been abusive to you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and they will keep demonstrating generally the same thing to you, and that is that they don't love you. And until you come to terms with that, nothing will change. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any questions about that, Kate? Or? Yeah, that, yeah? If, I, if you wouldn't mind. Um, yeah. Just about in the, in the moment, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got some resistance about this. So would you say to them or would you just act like well what i do is if if they're doing something that doesn't affect me personally then then i certainly stay in the situation and i look at my response to what they're doing does that make sense you stay in the situation yeah Yeah. because they're not doing something to me personally 
It's not my business necessarily. It depends, though, of course. If, if I've invited 50 people to a seminar and then I notice one of those people attacking five other people, then that is my business yeah. because, it's, because I've invited them to the seminar. Does that make sense? And I'm responsible for the lack of love that goes on at the seminar if I've invited them. And this is why I'm trying to correct those particular things with seminars. But let's say I'm just down shopping, out shopping. The shopping centre is not owned by me. Right? I'm just a, you know, a customer of the shopping centre. And so I walk in and then there's this lady yelling at her husband, you know, get on with it, come on, move on, you know, being unloving to him. And I feel, what I feel then is I go, okay, there's another example that I've attracted of a man getting nasty, oh, sorry, a woman getting nasty with her man again. How does that apply to me? How do I, how do I still allow, to me that indicates that I still probably allow women to treat me badly without it even... So I don't then get all angry and upset and go up to the woman and say, are you bad to your husband, you know, what are you doing? Yeah. She's never asked me to do that. She's not in my face doing it. Um, and, and obviously he accepts it and, there, and there's little I can do to change his will or hers on that regard. But I can at least be self-reflective about how I've attracted this situation in front of me and I'm observing it. And it is having an impact upon my soul because I can feel it. And that shows me there must be still some truth in there for me to fo focus on. So I do. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But now if she came up to me and she started abusing me, mm. what would I do then? Well, what I'd do is say, you're a very abusive woman, actually. And to be frank with you, I don't want to hear from you. And to be frank with you, I don't think anything you've got to say to me while you're abusing me has any value whatsoever. Go away. <laughs> That's what I would say to her. And if she decided to stick around abusing me, I'd just say, well, come with me then if that's what you're going to do. And I'd walk to the nearest police station and say, this woman keeps abusing me and following me around. She's stalking me now right, and abusing me. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I don't want to see her. <laughs> and if they say, oh, we're going to write out a court order to get a, get a restriction upon her, I'd say, no worries. I'll write out a court order. Here's the restriction. <laughs> Because I've already given her the opportunity to be more loving and she's not taking it. Does that make sense? But then I wouldn't go home and say, oh, that's all resolved. No. It's pretty big attraction if I have a woman coming up to me who doesn't even know me, abusing me in public, and then I take her to the police station and she's still abusing me, and so much so that I need a court order to stop her. That's a fairly big attraction, isn't it, of my soul. That, to, that tells me, wow. I, I must be so open to getting abused by women that women just think they can do that to me. There must be a lot of hurt in me about that happening in my childhood somewhere. And that would tell me that I need to go into that direction. Does that make sense? So while I would act lovingly in the situation, I would still not avoid the fact that I needed to go through some feelings of forgiveness, and, uh, uh, for, for, forgiveness in this case of something occurring in my childhood. That makes sense. That's what I would do. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, it does. But the problem that I have is that even when I'm maybe saying something like, there might already be anger, like I don't because of um, you know my lack of humility with the issue, which we've already discovered. So do the same thing. Um, do what uh, as close is loving as you possibly can do. Okay. And then go away and said, yeah, I was probably angry there. So therefore, I have some demands upon her. Okay. I have some addictions with them that are not getting met. What's your addiction with your mother? Just ask yourself that question. Your addiction is you want to give her the opportunity to be more loving, and she's not. So that's probably the same addiction you've got going on with these women. You're trying to give them the opportunity to be more loving, and they're not. Wanting them to change it instead of me. Yeah. Correct. And you, sometimes people do, and then it's like really good, you know, good, it's really but in, good. A, in the addictive good way. Like, oh, this is the best thing yeah, ever. Yeah, isn't it wonderful that person's changed? But, but, it, but the real problem is... When they've changed, mm. you still haven't gone through this stuff with your mum. None of it. And so, and so what's going to happen? Further. Now that that woman's changed, that's really good. All you're going to do is now replace her with another woman who, <laughs> who, and attract the same event again, Does that make sense? which has been happening, that's right? the story of my life. That's yeah. the story of your life, yeah, over and over again, right? Yeah, and some of them change and they become friends, but other ones don't. And, and you're truthful each time, but you're not 
fully truthful about your own feelings. Mm. You're not allowing yourself to get to your own hurt. That's the real issue. Because you have an addiction that they need to change before you go to your own hurt. And when they do change, you still don't go to your own hurt. No, haven't so, so far. So that's and the real don't problem. don't see that I will in the future. I think you will. I mean, without, sorry, without, without some, myself taking correct, ownership without of without some change in your will. I mean, like if people just kept changing, yeah, I don't yeah. see that I would. Yeah, and this is what people don't realise about the spirit world, you know. What, what often happens in the spirit world is all the no people that are nasty around you become nice over a period of time, but you still won't forgive. And so they all move on. And you're, all, you're left by yourself not forgiving still and, and just replacing them with another group, group of people who reflect that particular emotion to you. And my suggestion is that's a, that, that's a long-winded way of dealing with it. It's far better to be soft and go into the hurt child than it is to do all of those things. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully that's helped, is it? Or? That's great. Yeah, that's, thanks so much. No it's worries. really it's great. My pleasure. There's a lot more with a lot of these sessions we could say, but, but I think if you just work primarily on that one thing, what do you want from your mum mm. and what are you waiting for here before you go to your own sadness? Because whatever you're waiting for is causing these attractions with all of these nasty women and whatever you're waiting for is, is causing them to all believe that they can continue to abuse you just like your mum continues to believe and you're waiting for something. And if you know what you're waiting for and give that up, then maybe you'll get into the hurt instead of waiting, waiting, mm. waiting, waiting, and five years later, waiting, ten years later, waiting, yeah. and nothing really changing. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, immensely. Thank no you. No worries. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Thank you.